All right, said I'm going to outline everything, so uh, I don't know if, it's, uh, if I can handle that, but I'll do my best here. And uh, I think part of it's already started to be outlined, but it's worth reiterating again. That First Amendment, which states that Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech. That's the First Amendment found in our United States Constitution. That's the reason why we're all gathered here today. Many of us are led to believe that religious persecution is something that's happening overseas in a faraway land. Many of us have seen videos of ISIS members beheading Christians. Many of us have heard about underground home churches in China. Many of us have heard about Boko Haram kidnapping young women in Nigeria who were then forced to convert. What about the home front? Do we have anything to worry about back in the good old U.S. of A.? I regret to inform you that many of us have been lulled to sleep resting upon the assertion of our First Amendment. What happens when we have government officials who don't honor their oath to support the Constitution? What happens when our Supreme Court decides to make laws despite the fact that all, I'll emphasize that again, all legislative authority rests solely with Congress? What happens when our electorate does not have a civics education that teaches them what their rights are? The fact is that our religious freedom and freedom of speech are both under assault right here in America before our own sleepy eyes. Today we have Julia Ward to talk about how she was expelled from counseling program out at Eastern Michigan University due to her religious beliefs. In my own school district, we preach talent for all except when Christians assert a virgin birth for our Savior. Students are mocked for believing in Holy Communion and for going to buildings and eating some dead guy's body. We have military chaplains that are forbid from mentioning the word Jesus. We have business owners like the COO of Chick-fil-A that are having their businesses attacked because he expressed his belief that marriage is between a man and a woman. We have an ever more intrusive government that issues mandates to companies like Hobby Lobby to provide specific birth control options to their employees even though that by doing so, it would violate their religious conscience. Now, whenever we bring up specific instances of religious persecution in America, such as those that I've outlined, we are told that these incidents are the exception, and they're not the rule, and that we're exaggerating their seriousness. My friends, the threat to our religious freedom is indeed very real. I'm here to tell you that there are over 1,200 documented, that's documented cases of religious persecution in America over just the past decade. Those are only the ones brought to, brought to court. You can find them listed at uh, religioushostilities.org. My friends, it's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to take a stand for our religious liberty before it's gone. Now today we're going to hear, from some, uh, hear about some of these cases that I just outlined. Today we're going to hear from civic leaders and religious leaders who are heeding God's word when he tells us, do not be afraid. You see, when you stand up for the truth of our country's founding principles, when you stand up for God's word, you will face opposition. Remember in John 16, 33, in this world you will have trouble, but... Be of good cheer, for we have overcome the world. For he has overcome the world. Through him. <laughs> so, I, you know, there's not much for us to be afraid of. So I, I, um, I want to make sure that you understand that when you stand up for, uh, for God, and you stand up for Christianity in particular, you're going to find people who are going to say you're a bigot. You're going to find people who assert that you're denying them their rights. You're going to find people that simply hate you because you're a Christian. My friends, I'll reiterate, do not be afraid. We have a lot riding on our defense of religious liberty. And Tom Jefferson put it this way. Thomas Jefferson. I don't know Tom on a first name basis. So, Thomas Jefferson put it this way. Can the liberties of a nation be thought secure when we have removed their only firm basis, a conviction in the minds of the people that these liberties are a gift of God? It's time to take a, take a stand for that firm basis upon which all of our liberties depend. It is time to take a stand for religious liberty. Thank you for being here today.